So now that we've seen what a full material declaration looks like, what the, what the concept of it is and what the required elements are, let's look at why we would want to use those things. What value does it bring to our environmental compliance processes if we do that? Well, let's take a look and see. Well, the main benefit, the most um, far-reaching benefit of building a substance database of the substances present in our products is that we now have the ability to validate against new expanding and proposed substance restrictions and reporting requirements in real time. If we don't have that capability, then we're in a situation where we are actually um, always behind, always trying to catch up, always pulling our supply chain. Let me give you some examples of some of those changing, emerging, and, and expanding regulations. For example, REACH SVET is a great example. The list has 224 substances on it, but that list gets updated twice per year. So there will be 224 until January, and then it's going to go up again, and then next June it will go up again. They just added a new substance to this list a few weeks ago. Right. So if you don't know whether that substance is in your product, you're going to have to go back and pull your supply chain before you can confirm to your customers that you comply with this new regulation. Right. The same goes with ROWS. There's actually a project in place, a review that was launched to um, add more substances to the ROWS list. Right now, there's 10 substances on that list. So there were seven proposed. They were sent them to the consultant. The consultant came back to the commission, to the parliament, and recommended that they add MCCPs and TBBPA. So we now know the commission want is, has direction to move forward from consultants on adding two substances to the ROS3 list. Do you have those in your product? Um, are you concerned you may not be ROS compliant anymore once those get added to the list? Well, if you have a substance database, you can just go ahead and check and find out right away. And additionally, another requirement that came at us from surprise, it was the, the new PBT compounds restricted by the EPA under the Toxic Substance Control Act. This hit us in January of 2021 with a 60 day uh, implementation lead time. Now, luckily the industry was able to push back and get an extension on the enforcement on one of those substances, PIP31. However, the other four compounds, including DECA BDE are in force. And um, when you have these kind of regulations coming at you and you need to be able to comply with them quickly, you need to be able to understand what substance content is in your product again. Otherwise you have to go back to every supplier and say, hey, do you have these new compounds? And can you let me know right away? Because I'm going to have to stop shipping my product soon if I can't validate this, right? So again, um, looking at Switzerland, they just added new PFOS compounds to the Orchem uh, regulation. Those come into effect in October of this year. Do you have any impact to your products on that? Or you have any regulation violations as associ uh, associated with that new restriction coming out of Switzerland? Um, you're going to need to check with your supply chain if you haven't built a a substance database on your products. Um, in this, this month, the EU, EU Council agreed to add multiple substances to the persistent and organic pollutants regulation. Six or seven different substances have been agreed to be added, so we can expect to see that happen. And whether or not we have data to support that requirement, I don't know. If we have a substance database, we probably do. So again, here's more regulations coming at us. But it's not just the regulations. It's also the requirements coming at us from industry, like the declarable substance list, the IEC 62474 declarable substance list for electrical and electronic equipment. That's the declarable substance list for the electronics industry. Customers come and say, hey, can you give me a declaration to that list? Because it covers multiple regulations as they relate to electronics equipment. Right? So what they do is they screen out all the substances that don't relate to electronics equipment so you don't get bogged down with that. So this DSL is very powerful. A lot of companies reference it. But it just got updated in January, February, because as I mentioned, it supports all kinds of regulations. So it's constantly being updated. So once they add substances to the DSL list, you can't make a declaration against that list until you go back to your supply chain and find out if those new substances are present or not. Well, Hopefully, we've been collecting that in advance. And then the GATSO list is the same thing. It's just a declarable substance list for the automotive industry, and it has the same problem. Also updated in February of 2022, you know, they add substances to that list all the time. And when they add substances to the GATSO list, and you're trying to sell your products or your components to manufacturers of automotives, automobiles or automotive devices, they're going to ask you to either give them a full material declaration or give them a report to the GATSA list. In order to do the GATSA list, you need to have full material, full material declaration data available or validate GATSA against every single one of your suppliers. 
Now, looking at Prop 65, they're adding substances all the time. They just added PFOA to their list in February 2022. So now, a few months ago, they had a substance. We need to make sure that we don't have any exposures that we need to provide warnings for for PFOA. Do we know if we even have PFOA present or where it is present in our product? That's a question that only you can answer. But that's why you see the benefits of an FMD database as all these are coming at us from all these different directions, European requirements, Switzerland, um, EU Parliament, Rose Reach. We have the US TSCA coming at us. We have international standards coming at us with their declaration lists. We have California. And they're all coming at us with different substances and they're implementing them in different ways. And we need to be able to address those. So it's a huge benefit to have a substance declaration database that we can reference. Learn more by viewing the full length video online at greensofttech.com slash videos. Plus, learn about our environmental regulation solutions online at greensofttech.com.